Just a little off foot, thinking he's gonna go far post. Not strong enough with his right hand. Whips that one in. Far post, almost made him into they have. He has the hat trick. The second in his career. The third of the night. The hat trick hero. Talked about you're not gonna be able to sustain that kind of pressure. To the corner. Goes towards the near post, and you're on the angle, and what a goal! What a goal! Well, thank you guys for listening today to the From the Touchline podcast. A special guest with me is Brooke Ewert, and Brooke is the director of counseling for Soccer Chaplains United and has been instrumental in helping me with counseling needs uh, as I serve the Colorado Rapids and other teams. And so, Brooke, it's uh, good to have you back finally on the podcast. Thank you. I'm excited to be here today. Brooke, what have you been up to uh, this summer? Well, we had a blessing of having both of our girls back home since coronavirus kind of pulled everybody back from school and ballet. And so we had a summer of the six of us again that now looking back was like the greatest gift of it. Just took both of the girls back to school this week. So the house is quiet again, and I'm already wow. just not loving that, but also <laughs> so happy for them that they're back in school and enjoying themselves. So, Well, this has been really a trying time with coronavirus. And uh, just even before we started recording, you and I were talking about the different challenges we've faced personally mm-hmm. and in our families and just even in the work that we do. Yeah. And uh, today on the podcast, I really wanted to kind of focus in and and talk about how do we really cope with COVID and and what are some of the ways that, you know, if we think about uh, those in our audience who are athletes, Mm -hmm. whatever level they're at, or if they're coaches, or if they're part of these organizations where they're, they have a responsibility for overseeing or caretaking for the mental health of their employees or their staff. What are some ways that you're encouraging clients and other people that you're seeing that they need to just first maybe have an awareness Uh of what's going on, their mental health needs and their emotional needs? Yeah, it's interesting. I So I see regularly athletes of all ages. I think I have a 10-year-old right now all the way to um, probably mid-30s. Uh, athletes who are struggling, but it was interesting during coronavirus time or when the lockdown happened, a lot of my college kids came back and this kind of taps into what you're saying was, um, they were really struggling with loss of independence, um, trying to figure out how do I do my sport if it's a fall sport and it's coming up. But, you know, I think coaches also are struggling because they don't know what the season looks like and they don't know how to, get everybody ready or, you know, in the midst of professional sports, uh, you know, is a season going to get shut down because we have teammates that are sick. Um, and I or, think- or there's even like a little bit of this start, stop, mm-hmm. start, stop, at, at least with major league soccer. Yeah. There's been that because you have, uh, you, you had the preseason and then you started the mm-hmm. season and now you stop. we got to readjust for Corona. Oh, now we're going to do a bubble tournament. Now we got to stop mm-hmm. and then resume the season into yeah. a phase. And so, yeah, that, that mentally is taxing mm-hmm. and wearing, and, and perhaps, what, is it fair to say this is unlike any other time we've, we've ever faced? Oh, absolutely. And I think everybody's feeling that on a level, but like m- most people don't understand is that athletes are feeling this on a completely different level. I always try to explain to people, athletes are not like the general population. So we don't have these, we don't have these studies to show. This is how something would affect, you know, athletes. I personally think that athletes are getting affected a lot more personally because, um, that the start stop is, is a perfect example because how do you motivate yourself constantly to get back on your sport and to, you know, when there's a start stop, usually the season's over or there's like, you know, a little break, you know, because there's an all-star tournament, but rarely for months at a time. And then to have to try to, you know, get back into shape and stay motivated for the season. I think MLS soccer is like the perfect example of it because they've done so much start stop that they're really, I mean, I, I'm thinking about just, and just, a, again, just a general way, how hard it would be to motivate yourself to keep going. Yeah. And then, and then to top it all off, even in the midst of season, quote unquote, mm-hmm. you have isolation. Right. And so you have people 
living or dwelling or being quarantined, mm-hmm. being in isolation for yeah. X number of days or weeks at a time, if there's an outbreak or if there's a potentially mm-hmm. positive qu- case, which again throws uh, more more things into the works because you have the potential of things Mm -hmm. and then you have the reality of things. Yeah. And I mean, as you were talking through that, I was thinking the word that just popped to my mind was loneliness. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're in isolation, you're lonely, you're not, you know, with your family. Um, I know a lot of these teams have been in like bubble situations. So they're away from their families or their only way to connect is over FaceTime Um, and I mean, that's hard as a dad, I can imagine that being hard as, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, all these different situations have been going on. Wife, husband, you know, just the magnitude of how lonely that would feel to just do it all on screen. It's better than nothing, but it's still not the touch. It's not the hugs or, you know, just being, you know, near someone who you love. Right. So, Brooke, what's the red flag? Like, if, if someone's listening to the podcast today and they go, oh, yeah, that's me, mm. or I'm struggling, but, but what are the red flags that you would say, like, hey, when you start doing this, like, you start talking to the wall, or you start mm-hmm. to, like, Tom Hanks in the film <laughs> starts talking to the volleyball, right? Yeah. Like, now you know, like, and he did that as a coping mechanism mm-hmm. to survive, but what are the red flags where you go, okay, you need to seek help. You need to change up your routine. You need to, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the exercises and things we can do, but what are the flags? How do you, how do we create awareness in self or with our community that is in proximity around us to say, Hey, there's, there's something going on. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm going to kind of talk through what I've seen with the athletes I've seen this summer is the lack of motivation to do anything, wanting to isolate yourself in your room and not wanting to be with others. Even if you have the opportunity to be with your teammates in like a bubble situation, but you find, Oh, I don't even want to do that. I don't have the energy for that. Or you find yourself overeating or under eating. Um, I mean, you've heard me say this before. The biggest red flag to me is always suicidal ideations. When you get to a place where you are thinking it would be better, even if it's a passive, it would be better if, you know, a bus hit me right now. Or, you know, what what would happen if I just drove really fast and someone hit me and they didn't get hurt, but I did. You know, I think those are the things that to me as a therapist are always the biggest red flags is because that behavior or those thought patterns aren't, I'm going to put it in quotes, normal for, you know, a human person we have this um, thing within us that tells us that life is worth living. And when that life that doesn't feel like it's worth living to me is always the biggest one. But I think, you know, going back even just to more simpler things like anxiety, you know, if you're feeling like so panicky or anxious about actually going to your sport or, you know, getting out on the field because you're feeling like, oh, I'm behind or I, I'm afraid something's going to happen to me. I'm going to get hurt. Those are those are other just little flags that just start popping up to me, too. Yeah, and how much for the mentality of a high-level elite performance mm-hmm. athlete to say, I don't want to do this because I know I'm not at my peak. Mm-hmm. I know I'm not. I can't perform well enough. Yeah. And so again, it's it's almost like it's almost like an onion. There's a lot of mm-hmm. layers to peel back on yeah. the mentality challenges that are going on through this time. So so Brooke, if if we look at the challenges that are going on and we go. Here's some helpful exercises. Here's some helpful tools. What would you say, you know, quick, three, four, five, what what would be some things that you would say, um, check into this, do this? Uh, what would those things be? Yeah, I mean, the first thing I thought of with your, an athlete is checking in with their teammates. You, I think most people put it on themselves, like, I'm not doing okay, but everybody else is. And often what I've seen is that other teammates are not doing well either. Uh, So it's just good to check in and say, hey, how are you doing? And then taking it a step further to, like, how are you doing on your mental health? Now, Brooke, what if I'm in a competitive professional Mm -hmm. environment, though, and my teammates actually, I'm kind of vying against them for a position or place in the team or in the squad. Like, how do you overcome that to say, I mean, because you risk vulnerability when you raise your hand. Yeah. Well, and if you, I, you know, even on a sidestep from that too, there may be a physio that you feel better talking to, or, you know, someone that's not as a big of a threat maybe to your position. But I feel like most of the time, this is what I feel. They usually have a team member that they're closer to, Mm -hmm. and maybe it's not a a person that they're vying for in the same position. Um, I've I've heard athletes say, oh, I want to tell my friend, you know, but I'm afraid. Um, But, you know, I think sometimes taking that extra step. Um, other things that I thought of to, 
um, find a quiet place, even to go for a walk, just finding a space that you can just breathe. Um, it doesn't have to be like weird <laughs> breathing. It can just be taking deep breaths. And I know in Colorado, we're kind of struggling with, with smoky air right yeah, our now. Yeah, air quality is horrible. Yeah, I was thinking like, is of... this a pun, Brooke? You're talking about breathing <laughs> and we have to wear masks and it's, we're inhaling smoke. Yeah. So. Yeah. So obviously, you know, for people who are not in Colorado or California, I guess where all this, you know, all the fire is coming or the flames are and smoke are coming from, um, you know, taking a, at least taking a break and a walk, sometimes just going, Uh, meeting a friend for coffee, even if you have to do it outside because there's, you know, they're not open right now, just anything just to get yourself connected with someone else socially. You know, one of the things I was going to ask you, this is something I've been doing is I've noticed that some of the athletes and people that I meet with on Zoom seem fatigued Mm -hmm. by Zoom. And, And we could talk more about the mental, spiritual, emotional drain of video. Yeah. But so, so I've tried to mix up my communication by, Um, maybe making a phone call instead, Mm -hmm. doing a Zoom. Sometimes I send a text or sometimes I've even sent audio messages where I am am providing that sort of pastoral care, that chaplain care, but it's very um, one way. It's Mm -hmm. very direct to them and I almost Mm -hmm. let them choose Hey, do I have the space? Do I need this right now? Do I have the space to, to take this on? Even if it's a positive thing, um, or do I just need to put down my device, get outside, go walk, go, go get away from things for a while? Mm-hmm. So talk a little bit about mixing it up, yeah. so to speak. You know, it's interesting when you said Zoom fatigue, I was just immediately like, oh, I don't want to do another Zoom session ever. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's it's kind of the reality of what we live in. And I think I am very similar to you in that. Like, I've been trying to mix things up, too. I have athletes that are coming in for sessions. I also have athletes that are we're doing phone. It just depends on where they are. Um, but also, you know, I think with, you know, just even teammates or coaches or, you know, um, just peers, just, I agree. I think mixing it up makes it not feel so fatiguing to be on video all the time. Um, and, you know, and I think too, you can keep things short and sweet. It doesn't have to be, you could even say, Hey, we have five minutes to talk. I mean, you can give people a parameter of time. Um, or, hey, this is going to be a little bit of a longer conversation. Do you have this space or the mental space for that right now? Yeah. Asking permission is good. Mm-hmm. Asking permission is helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, talk a little bit about the, maybe the athlete, the coach, the person that is facing loss at this time. Um, I, there's a number of people that I know in the industry, especially in football and soccer, that have lost their job. They've lost the season. They've lost the collegiate program. They've lost the scholarship. They've lost the playing opportunity. They've lost fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. What do we do with those losses? Yeah, boy, I've had this a lot this summer. A lot of a lot of athlete clients who have said, "What what am I gonna do if my season ends?" It started very early. It actually started in March. You know, we had athletes in Colorado and all over the country who lost their spring seasons um, in high school and collegiate. So. My big advice, which sounds so simple, is just honestly to take it one day at a time. It's been the thing that I've said over and over and over again, but also you can only control what you can control too. There's some situations right now that are actually out of our control. Um, And just to keep your head up, to try to stay as positive as possible, but also like handing things over when you can just to keep yourself mentally as strong as possible. And also to kind of look down the road a little bit and think sometimes there are situations that are coming down the road that are actually going to be blessings too. Yeah. Um, it's just hard when we're in the throes of a pandemic or, you know, um, just the loss of, you know, sport or whatever to just kind of, we're just so bad at that sometimes of just sitting in that space and thinking we're, I, I think what we're not super great at is looking at what's maybe coming ahead that might actually be better. And these are unprecedented times. I just encourage people that there's likely to be a chaplain, a counselor, mm-hmm. a pastor, a friend, an objective person outside of your sport. They're not, they don't have a vested interest in you. They might be struggling at a different way with the pandemic, a different way with mm-hmm. the shutdowns and the quarantines and, and all the byproducts of this. And they are learning coping tools and mechanisms as well. And, you know, again, it's it's kind of like um, we use a phrase in in pastoral care, the wounded healer, or Mm -hmm. we use a phrase in, in, um, in sort of these helping situations where we're, we're using our own, um, our, our own pains and losses 
to help someone else through their their time of grief mm-hmm. or their time of loss as well. Yeah. And so if we find a good traveling companion, yeah. grab them and stick with them. Like make them part of your team. Yeah. And I think you're right. Sometimes when someone's kind of fallen down, there's someone that can kind of pick you up and walk alongside of you and say, come along. I broke along. that's in the Bible. So here we go. I know, I know. That's chaplain territory. I yeah. know. <laughs> but I think there are people, you're right. There are people who have maybe better coping skills that are alongside of you or you know, they've been trained differently too. And we're all together in this. Um, but just to trust, you know, that maybe there are people out there. I am a hundred percent in accordance with you that there are other people out there that maybe aren't in your organization that are out in the community that are really good at helping. And you just have to find the helpers. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's another thing too, just to even try to go back to experiences that are similar Mm -hmm. and say, what helped me then? Uh, it may not totally match up. You know, I, part of me is thinking, well, when the Spanish flu hit, what, what was going on in the sports world then? Like, how did they cope? How did they get through? Or, you know, maybe we look at situations like the world wars and when sports kind of had to cease for a time because the world was in turmoil. Like, those are those are times to go, who do I know? Or what story can I find? Or what what things can I learn from those experiences? Someone who's gone before me and now I can take and adopt and adapt to my current situation with the things that someone else has mm-hmm. left behind and, and told me this is how we forged a path ahead into into a new world or a new time, a new season. So, yeah. well, Brooke, kind of as we close things up, any great books or recommendations, things you'd say, hey, here's a good podcast, here's a good book, here's a good resource. Um, of course, I'll just put in the plug for Soccer Chaplains United and our counseling and our and our chaplaincy services. Like this is a good time to reach out to us. But Brooke, what would you say are, are some good things? Helpful yeah, that's things? really good. I, I think even thinking about how people have dealt with things differently, I honestly put down biographies right now. Biographies to me, you always are learning about how people dealt with a situation that you may never find yourself in, but how did they get through it? So I put Eric Liddell was in, you know, pretty unique time. Um, the runner from Scotland, uh, Michael Jordan has been through tough times, Andre Agassi, um, and just his ups and downs in tennis, uh, the story unbroken by, about Louis Zamperini. Um, and then another book that was really incredible that I read a few years ago called Boys in the Boat by Daniel Brown, um, just about, uh, a boat or a crew team that really had to work together that the, the crew team was, you know, constantly having to face new challenges and who was going to get in that boat, um, was super inspirational to me as I work with athletes. But then the last book that has nothing to do with biographies is a book called Grit by Angela Duckworth. Um, and that book, she talks a lot about what makes certain athletes or, you know, just individuals rise to the top. What is it about them? What is that grittiness factor? Um, and I see it in my office, athletes who have faced these enormous challenges and then somehow push themselves forward. I have a gymnast that I see and she is just such a gritty kid. And I love to see what it is. And she is even keeled. She's just not a lot of highs and lows. She just keeps herself pretty like even. And so those those are things. And of course, you know, I am just a big person and the Bible probably has someone that's been through a tough story that you can look at and go, well, maybe my life isn't, you know, quite so hard right now. And that's not to, um, you know, make our lives seem less, but more of there's been other people that have gone through some really tough times and they've gotten themselves through it and God's gotten them through. That can be an encouragement to us for sure. And, and I would, I just to add on to what you've said is, is to, realize what this time actually affords us Mm. in that even if you have a pause on your season, even if you have a loss, a stoppage, a break, a quarantine, there, there usually is a gift in there. And sometimes it's a gift of time, for example, or it's a gift of rest. It's a gift of um, just letting the ground lie fallow for a little while. And sometimes it sparks for the artist, for the performer, it's it's it sparks new creativity. It it, it creates adaptability. Those kinds of things can help help us move forward and move on. I know for myself as a chaplain, I've had to adapt the ways that I provide pastoral care and spiritual care to the people I'm called to serve. And so, 
I have to learn Zoom. <laughs> I, I have to podcast more. I have to do one-way audio prayers that, that get sent into an inbox or to someone's voicemail or, or their, their phone. And so those different kinds of things create an ad- adaptability. And, and, and for counseling, like, Brooke, what are some of the things you've seen grow out of this pandemic time on the counseling side? I would say more reliance upon um, athletes seen within themselves. You know, I have these these gifts that I didn't see that I had before, but I would say for myself, it's been to sit in a very um, maybe quieter time and actually do some really, really deep work with some of these athletes who have never dealt with family systems, their family issues, Um, or siblings that they've never been around for months and months because their sport ended and their other, you know, their other sibling had their sport. And so everybody's around each other. I've seen some really amazing family stuff come that maybe families weren't as close and are now a lot closer because those things slowed down or stopped. Yeah. And there's this confrontation with reality Mm -hmm. that just, it won't go away. And so if you're listening today, just want to encourage you, you can certainly reach out to us, especially if you're in the soccer football world. We want to be a help. We want to be a support to you. And if we don't have people serving, particularly your team or in your region, we will find those resources for you. And we just want to encourage you that now is the time to to take advantage of this time and and to learn maybe some some ways to cope, some ways to adapt and some ways to move forward and move on. And, and it is possible, right, Brooke? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, there's, a, there's a lot of learning, I think, going on for everybody. But also just realizing that you're not alone. There are people there to help you. And, yeah, we're excited to help, too. We love what we do. Yeah. Well, Brooke, I want to pray for us as we close out uh, today's From the Touchline podcast. And thank you for coming on. Welcome. We won't wait. I think last time you were on was like December. So we, we won't wait as long next time and we'll have you back on uh, soon again. Thanks. Okay. God, I just want to lift the athlete, the coach, the staff member, um, and, and the people all around uh, the different uh, soccer and, and football environments around the world as, as some places in Europe are, are having a short break and then they're about to get back into it again. As other places around the world in Mexico, U.S. and Canada, things are still going. I just pray that you would be with the athletes. You'd be with those that are involved in these difficult, trying, unprecedented times. And Lord, I pray that that these moments um, would be uh, captured in some way. They would not be wasted and that you would let... Um, you would let each person, each athlete, coach, or staff person, or family member, however they need to take this time, that they would glean from it, they would gain from it, uh, they would grow personally closer to you, stronger in their mental health, stronger in their faith, stronger in their spiritual health and emotional development. And I just pray that you would protect and preserve and guard during this time. And we give all these things to you. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen.